Good morning. Are there any public speakers? Good morning. We have two members of the public registered to speak today. As a reminder, we ask that all public speakers adhere to the MTA rules of conduct and decorum. I would also like to remind our public speakers that in the interest of time and fairness to all speakers, we limit everyone to two minutes. Please be aware of the clock in the front of the room and the warning light you will see reminding you that you have 30 seconds left to conclude your remarks. The first speaker will be Jason Anthony. Following will be Murray Bowden. Good morning, Danny. Uh, <clears throat> Jason Anthony from Amazon Labor Union. Yet again, I have to speak at the Bridges and Tunnels Committee because I still don't see a bike path on the Verrazano Narrows Bridge because it's the only bridge that doesn't have a bike path. And it is very disappointed that it's the only bridge that connects Brooklyn and Staten Island that doesn't have a bike path because the rest of the Port Authority's uh, bridges, like the George Washington Bridge that connects Manhattan and New Jersey, the Gossel Bridge that connects New Jersey and Staten Island, has a bike path. But why not the Verrazano? Amazon workers that work at the nearby facility in the Bluefield section of Staten Island uses the Gothels. But yeah. well, why can't yeah. Amazon workers yeah. use the Verrazano if they live near the Verrazano and live in Brooklyn? It doesn't make any sense. So Danny, I want action from the Bridges and Tunnels Committee to create a bike path on the Verrazano, pronto. Because it's very disgraceful that the Metropolitan Transportation Authority doesn't have a bike path on the Verrazano. And creates an inconvenience for Amazon workers to use their cars over the Verrazano. I'll see you guys on the Camille Rails. Thank you. The next speaker is Murray Bowden. Morning. I'm a lip reader. If you want me to understand your words, you have to take your mask off because I read your lips. If you have a mask on, don't expect me to understand what you're saying. two sets of rules. You wonder why people are not paying their tolls and why they're cheating. Really simple reason. It's because you lie. This Bridges and Tunnels lies and cheats. And why should you get away with breaking a law and expect us to follow the law? On a lower level of the Henry Hudson Bridge, the lines have been wrong. I was here months ago, told you about it, they won't fix it. Which means, Danny, much as I like you, it's time you retired and got a whole new team. Who said the what? Who said that? Didn't hear you. Sorry. You want the people to obey the law, then you follow the law. It's time that you got a whole, either you get a whole new team that follows the manual on uniform traffic control devices because it's reflected right across the city. You don't follow the law, why should anybody else? Why should I stand here and follow his two minute rule when you don't follow the rules? I won't. I will create a situation where I don't follow the rules. You should be out there, and if somebody can't see a license plate from 30 feet away and read it clearly, they get a ticket. They have obscured license plates, and you can't read them, and the money doesn't come in. You got, dry, you got police out there. If you can't see the plate from 30 feet away with normal eyes, they get a ticket. Now, I'm going to talk longer just to prove Please conclude that your I, remarks. you may say whatever you want, 
but I'm proving that if you don't have to obey the law, I don't have to obey the law. Please conclude your remarks. Why should I? Why should I conclude? When you obey the law, I'll obey the law. I'll be 89 years old, and if you touch me, I'll break your fucking... Commissioner, we have one more public speaker, uh, Omar Vera. Hello. How's, how's everybody? All right. Welcome to the May edition of um, your meeting. Um, the only thing I'd like to mention here is to eliminate tolling on the um, Cross Bay Bridge as you're only traveling within the same borough, Queens. It doesn't make sense to have tolling within within the same borough. Other than that, um, you're all doing fine. Everything's fine, and um, I'll I'll see you around. Thanks. Bye. Commissioner, that concludes the public comment. Okay, I believe there's not enough voting members at this time to approve the minutes of the last, the April Bridge and Tunnel Committee meeting, so we'll save that approval for next time. Um, are there any changes to the Bridge and Tunnel Committee work plan? Uh, there are no changes to the work plan. So with that, if I may? Yes, please. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, good morning and welcome to the May 2022 Bridges and Tunnels Committee meeting. First, I'd like to thank Commissioner Barbas for once again acting as acting chair. Uh, as you may know, the Memorial Day weekend traditionally kicks off our busy summer se travel season. Therefore, it's timely to share with you BNT's first w 1 million traffic day of 2022, which occurred on Friday, April 29th. And since then, just this last uh, Friday, we had another 1 million vehicle traffic day. Um, you know, basically with the summer weather that we had this weekend, it wasn't surprising that we had our second one this Friday. And we continue to see traffic trending close to reaching pre-pandemic levels, uh, which you're about to hear shortly from Chief Hildebrand. Whatever conditions confront us, I'm confident our field personnel are engaged and prepared, closely monitoring traffic conditions at our facilities to ensure a safe and smooth crossing for our customers. Operationally, in early May, the TD Fiber Bike Talk took place on May 1st, which marked the first full capacity city permitted event touching down or otherwise impacting service at our facilities since before the pandemic lockdown two years ago. Some 32,000 cyclists registered for this event crossing the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, the tail end of the 40 mile journey. I'd like to commend all of our employees who are involved in the substantial facility prep, on site management, and ensuring the safety and security of this event and its participants. And of a special note, our standard protocol training and planning came into play during that afternoon when a participant suffered what appeared to be a cardiac arrest on the lower level of the Verrazano Bridge. Our own law enforcement personnel were quick to respond with one of our automated external defibrillators, or AED, as emergency responders and others, others joined to save the man's life. I, comm I commend Special Operations Sergeant Giovanni Saravia for his quick actions, coordination, uh, coordination efforts, and calm under pressure. Unfortunately, the sergeant cannot join us today. We, we wanted to give him uh, a life-saving award in, in front of the board, but he couldn't uh, be here. So we will give him a, a life-saving award at a later date. So that was just a great job. I just want to congratulate the sergeant. Right now, from what I understand, the person is still alive. Great. Okay. Uh, but it was definitely a scary moment. I got a call from Richie that day and, uh, you know, saying we're working on someone on the lower level. So that's something that we didn't want to make sure that that person survived. And, and Unfortunately, unlike the runner in the book, a half marathon. That we just heard about, correct. And getting the AED there, and that's part of our plan, is to have the AED situated in such a way to get in there as quickly as possible. Because sometimes the EMTs can't get there. Because when you have 32,000 cyclists going over the bridge, it's hard to maneuver. And we're usually the closest ones there. So, again, thanks to Richie and his team uh, for having that all planned out. As I shared with the commissioners last week, MTA held a press conference last Friday at the Bronx Whitestone Bridge with our regional law enforcement partners to raise public awareness of our coordinated efforts in cracking down on covered and forged license plates. This issue impacts not only B&T toll revenue, but also impacts other agencies as well. I want to thank Chair Jana Lieber. 
our own law enforcement members, the state police, the NYPD, the sheriff's office, the Port Authority for coming out, and the press office and my b &T team for the successful event. I also have a staff announcement today, if I may. No, I'm still here. Okay. Uh, I'm not yet. I'm pleased to announce the appointment, the appointment of Nicola Angel as Vice President of Intelligent Transportation System and Tolling, or ITST, effective May 5th, 2022. Uh, Nicola has been serving as the acting VP role since December 2021, and please join me in congratulating Nicola as our newest senior staff colleague and wishing her success. Thank and Nicola is on the screen right there. Nicola, any words? I'm going to throw it to you. Can you hear me? We hear you. Okay, great. Thank you, Danny. Good morning, everyone. And I'm looking forward to being part of the BNT team. Thank you. And finally, as Memorial Day approaches, BNT would like to thank all of our veterans as we remember their sacrifices. Memorial Day, we're alive. Right, right. <laughs> That concludes my remarks, and if there's no questions, I'll turn over to Chief Hildebrand on report on operations. Thank you, Dan. The report on operations in this month's committee materials begins on page 14. As winter turned to spring, BNT traffic continued its growth through March of 2022 with an average increase of more than 40,000 vehicles per day versus what we had in February. The post-winter uptick in traffic is an annual occurrence for us at our crossings, and BNT reports traffic counts for 22 that were stronger than March of last year, as well as March of 2020, during which the first major COVID-19 restrictions were put into place. Paid vehicle traffic in March of 2022 was 27.4 million vehicles, which reflects an increase of 12.4 percent over the 24.3 uh, million crossings we had in March of 21, and 44.5 percent higher than March of 2020, with 8.4 million crossings. Or uh, more crossings, sorry. Easy Pass market share was 95.3 percent in March of this year, which is consistent with last month and last year, but a little bit lower than two years ago. For April of 2022. Preliminary BNT traffic was 10% higher than April of 21 and 181.5% higher than April of 2020. According to preliminary traffic data for April of 2022, uh, traffic was 0.1% lower when compared to traffic for April of 2019. Gasoline prices increased in March of 22 for the 15th time in 16 months, with average prices of $4.39 per gallon in March of this year which is an increase of 67 cents per gallon versus the $3.72 a gallon uh, at the pumps in February. This was also $1.51 higher than March of 2021 and $1.91 higher than it was two years ago. Weather conditions in March of this year were a bit unfavorable for drivers as compared to 21, but they had minimal impact to B&T traffic. 1.6 inches of snow fell this year in March compared to no snowfall in March of the past two years. And with that, uh, this concludes the report on operations for this month. I thank you and wish everyone um, a safe Memorial Day weekend. Thank you, Rich. If there's no questions for Rich, I'll turn it over to Eric Osen on report on safety. Thanks, Danny. The uh, March 2022 report, which begins on page 26, maintains performance metrics to be generally positive as traffic volume continues to trend toward and is now well within pre-pandemic levels. BNT safety report highlights the following. Overall, BNT's March 2022 total collision rate was 3.94 per million vehicles, which is 36 percent better than rolling year 1920, represent, representing the very beginning of the pandemic period. When compared to last year, results are slightly higher. The collision with injury rate was 0.69 per million vehicles, 28 percent better than in 19 and is also slightly higher than last year. To underscore facility-specific trends, the Throgsneck Bridge compared to prior months shows a proportionally higher collision rate. This observation may be correlated with a new traffic pattern that included a cattle chute traffic configuration commencing on February 27th, designed to accommodate roadway deck replacement at this facility. In response, the management team instituted enforcement and education strategies to communicate with customers and pace traffic to modify drive behavior, communication strategies to, prom to promote the neighboring Bronx Whitestone Bridge proved effective as that crossing absorbed traffic volume from the Throgs Neck, eliminating conditions that may have exacerbated additional collisions. Improvements were observed at the end of March and April 
as this stage of construction came to an end in early May. Employee safety metrics over a 12 month period are as follows. The employee lost time injury rate in March uh, was 5.9 incidents per 200,000 work hours, reflecting a decrease of 6% compared to uh, rolling year 1920 and about a 7% increase compared to year, rolling year 2021. And if you have any questions, Now it's on. Uh, it looks like the RFK bridge had an increase in accidents as well. Yes, we had, uh, we did see a, a bit of an uptick at the RFK. We have some off property issues that we think is a primary reason as to why that uptick is uh, being observed. Uh, we're working on our enforcement and our uh, education strategies to try to mitigate that as much as possible. This is on the, uh, the Bruckner, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Bruckner, work on the Bruckner. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Thank you. So I'm sorry, Eric. I, maybe I didn't catch it. So the Throgs Neck has this massive increase in in March uh, from two up to eight yep. uh, collisions. So that's obviously 400 percent. So just just again, what's the reason for that? So there was a change in traffic pattern. We had MPT to uh, accommodate. MPT is maintenance and protection of traffic. Uh, it's designed to modify um, driver behavior so that they can accommodate the construction that's occurring at that time. Anytime that there's a change in traffic patterns, there's a uh, acclimation period uh, that the driver right. needs to, right. you know, uh, get used to as they cross the bridge. I would say that uh, MPT is a, uh, it's definitely part of the design function. It's signed off by the designer of record. It gets executed and the management team is responsible for making sure that the design is doing in accordance what it was designed to do. Um, and I think uh, uh, this is uh, an example of the continuous improvement process can, can that goes on give, with give the team. Can you just give us one drop more of detail? Because, sure. like, I'm guessing MPT is not the same everywhere. So, like, what is it like? Is so, it a divider in? Like, what and, was the and, thing and, that was done? All right. So, because I don't see, I mean, I've been on this committee a long time. I generally don't see a 400% increase. So, this must no, have been, no, no. Uh, uh, this must have been I, a particularly uh, hard thing to navigate. So, that's why we're, we're, Get, trying to get out in front of it, Commissioner, and, and explain what happened. So this was a cattle chute, which um, meters traffic, and there's um, a, um, a line, a queue, that occurs within that cattle chute. What we did was to meter traffic within that cattle chute soon as we saw the, traf uh, the pattern occurring within that cattle chute. And what I'm trying to underscore is that in the beginning of uh, MPT being executed, this is all part of the design process. We have a designer of record that um, develops the MPT based on MUTCD guidelines so that there's a, there's a, uh, a standards and codes that correspond to this. And then when you're dealing with driver behavior, any type of modification of human behavior is unpredictable. So as we execute these MPT designs, it's up to the management team, again, to look at those designs and whether or not, as they're being executed, and whether they're producing the desired effect. And then as soon as we saw the changes that were occurring within this cattle shoot area, we executed uh, strategic uh, 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 actions and, uh, you know, try to uh, change behavior. That's where we are. So day, day one, we had our traffic engineers out there with the director of operations, Mike Barnwell, taking a look at the traffic pattern on day one. Everyone drove it. Danny himself drove it, myself, Charlie Passarelli. We all went out and, and started driving. We were a little uncomfortable with the way it was, started making changes right away. So just to build on what Eric said, we kind of adjusted the lines a little bit, uh, you know, moved the barrels slightly, additional signage, and a very, very aggressive messaging plan to let people know, you know, construction pattern ahead, new, 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 new pattern. And we also, on the flip of it, we worked with the contractors as well because a lot of their activity in the cattle chute or in the closed area between the two cattle chutes was eye-catching. And we wanted to make sure that what they were doing was not 
impacting in any way what was going on. So, so we worked with them. Everyone was a partner in this, and we saw week by week, generally, you know, generally the, the, the numbers were improved as we made little little chunks of improvement. So yeah. we were pretty happy with the results at the end, and now we're in a much smoother pattern. Yeah, and just to be clear, Eric, the, 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 by asking the question, it wasn't a criticism. I assume you guys are following all kinds of plans. I'm sure you have all people signing up. I wasn't assuming that one day you went out and said, hey, let's change the pattern. Uh, why not? You know, sounds fun. Um, I'm assume, we assume everything you do is by some book, and maybe a couple of different books. I think the question is more of what you said, Richard, which is very helpful, which is, you know, week to week, day to day monitoring. If, if, if that stat, we were able to look at it on a daily basis, if it gets better, great. If it, you know, whatever the periodicity is. And so I hope next month we'll not see eight, but we'll see four or something like that. But yeah. okay, all the things you said make perfect sense because there's not anyone on this table, maybe the my colleague to my right accepted, who has not gotten into a car accident at some point in their lives. Am I correct? Everyone's had one at least? Yes. Okay. So we're, we're with you. Just before I go to other questions, just to tie it all in. So just quickly, when the process begins, we had a, a public outreach process. So the notifications go out to the community leaders, the notifications go out to the public. We have a big PIO, public information outreach, uh, via email and, and VMS signage that, you know, new traffic pattern coming. We work closely with our C&D partners. They follow all regulations that they need to follow. The pattern went in s specific to the designer and the, and the proper MPT. And what we adjusted to was the driver behavior. Because nowadays, as I think Richie mentioned and Eric mentioned a little bit, not only are people looking around going, oh, what's that going on over there? But they're distracted with the big screens they have in the middle of their vehicles, their phones, the kids screaming in the back. There's a million things going on. So I, I applaud operations and safety for getting together because once, they, once we reacted to the driver behavior piece of it, the pattern or the, the collisions we saw go down, so actually showing that the pattern was safe but we would try to adjust to that, that behavior. And part of that is the education piece, but also the enforcement piece. So putting a patrol car at a certain spot, you know, slowed people down and made them think otherwise. Uh, and, and, you know, the VMS signs, you know, telling them you slow down in this area. So I just wanted to, to cap that all in before. And I'm sorry, I know there was questions. This one doesn't want to work. It's related to this. How far miles-wise or feet-wise in advance of the place that the change is made is the signage installed? That's all by proper MPT, all by the MUTCD guidelines. We follow everything as far as, and that's what the engineers give us. The engineers and the contractors give us that, and then we enhance it when we see different change, when the driver behavior we see, mm -hmm. then we enhance that. But it's the, the, the basic, that we, the needs of the pattern, we make sure they're in prior to, and like I said, we do our own advanced signage to say. Prior to and how far would you say? I don't have the direct, you know, I would have to get the whole plans as far as, you know, because there's a lot of different things. If Is it's it on, on the, the turn? bridge, it would be right. at the approach to the bridge? It would be on the approach to the bridge, right. Prior to, there's multi, you have to put a certain amount of signs prior to the construction, and then at the end of the construction has to be a sign that says construction ends. ends. Right, so I don't have direct feet, and, but there's a whole, there's a whole okay. pattern to that. Thank you. So this is the Throgsnack Bridge. Throgsnack, correct. Is it Queens bound or Bronx bound? The pattern was in the Bronx, the, the two single lane catalysts were in the Bronx bound direction. Okay, yeah. is it still going on? No, we have, no. It, shift, we have it shifted over now and it's, uh, it, it's, it's right lane work. <laughs> I'm going so to Queens, yeah, I'm no, no, it's right lane work, <laughs> okay. it's, it's all good. <laughs> Make sure I stay and away from it. <laughs> Commissioner Albert, we, we also utilize our, our partnerships with New York State and New York City DOT and the, through the Transcom network to request when feasible and, you know, they don't have more prioritized, mess uh, higher priority messaging to use it. So you, you may see it, you know, deeper on the, or, or further north, uh, further south on the Clearview. You may catch something on the LIE or, or, or the BQE or, or the Cross Island Parkway even. So we do put those messaging requests out once we see that. But, you know, it, it is definitely, as Danny, as President DeCrescent said, prior to the bridge. Well, we work with Transcom also. I don't know if Richie mentioned yes. that. We, we, we have regional messaging, so. Danny? <laughs> oh, sorry. I, hey, don't worry about it. Man. Um, um, yeah, 400% increase is a, a big number, but what's the number of vehicles that are actually fed into that, uh, were fed into that uh, dangerous area there? So we don't have a, a north versus southbound direction, but the Throgsnake Bridge uh, on the, on week one, 
saw about 728,000 vehicles. Week two, 700,000 vehicles. And we did see some of, some of the traffic sort of naturally shift over. And, and we actually messaged also to use the Whitestone Bridge, which was, you know, didn't have those, those uh, sort of challenging patterns. So we did, we did see a shift over at the Whitestone Bridge as well for, um, for the construction. So we were still maintaining most of our traffic, but there was a, a, a slight decrease at the Throgs. Yeah, well, my point is only that there's 3 million cars, and you had six more accidents. I'm surprised there were not more, actually. It's kind of the law of small numbers. 400% is, is a huge number because 2% was very low the month before. But it's a whole month, 3 million cars. I mean, I wish people drove better. I know how they drive. They want it. My, my son says they all think they're in the Secret Service or something. They all got to go, you know, they got to go around you. And the, the driver behavior is a, um, a sort of sick uh, psychology. But um, I don't, I don't, I'm not upset about the 400%. Thank you. No, thank you. And that's, and that's a great point. I mean, we were a victim of our success in some spots and, and especially with, uh, with COVID when we had less traffic. When you have less traffic, you have less congestion. When you have less congestion, you have less stop and go. So uh, again, comparing some numbers to, to last year or the year before, uh, you know, it fluctuates. But I'm not saying that as an excuse. I'm saying that when we, but when we do see a change or a fluctuation, we're, we're acting on it. If no other questions, Madam Chair. OK, can I have a motion to adjourn? Thank you. Um, a second? All in favor? Thank you.